Hello everyone, this is Wade from High Tech Legion, and in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview of the ASUS WRT firmware, particularly on the ASUS RT AC56U router. This router is an 802.11 AC router, AC1200, so it's 300 megabits on the per second on the 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band. So when we first plug in the router or connect to it wirelessly with our tablet, phone, or PC, we'll be forwarded to the setup page here. Um, you don't need any utilities or anything like that. You just open up an internet browser and it goes to the website. So we're going to go ahead and click go on this first page to check the connection status first thing it asks us to do is change the password on the router. So we'll do that. Then it's going to detect our connection type. In this case it's a DHCP so it just kinda flew right through it. Um, we're able to set up our wireless here. The defaults are ASUS and ASUS 5G. I'm gonna leave it at that. But I'm gonna put HTL test one two three four for the password. It does default to WPA2, um, which is what you really want to be using. So once that's done, we get a little summary page, and then we can click next, and we get to the main interface page of the router. on this main interface page you've got almost everything right that you want to access right here on the first page up in the top left the router a logout button a reboot button changing language of the interface quick internet setup that'll bring you back to what we just went through you have an operation mode here which if we click on that will bring us to the actually to the administration tab uh, where you can change from wireless router mode to repeater mode, access point mode, or media bridge mode. Under system you can change the password, time zone, and authentication method. You can also set IPs that are the only ones allowed to access the management page. You also have your firmware upgrade. We already have the latest firmware on here, but if you wanted to check for firmware, you would click check. Or if you wanted to upload a new firmware file, you would browse to that file and click upload. Here you can restore to factory defaults, save your settings for future restoration, or upload a settings file that you had saved previously by clicking browse and then upload. Clicking the uh, firmware version up here brings you specifically back to the firmware upgrade, and clicking either of the SSIDs brings you to an advanced configuration for those SSIDs, which I'll show you in a little bit. If we click network map, that'll bring us back to the main page. You have your clients button, which if you click on it, will show you all the clients that are connected to the router. These two are for your USB ports that are on the back. If you have something connected, you'll be able to click on it to configure it. You can click on your security level and that will uh, allow you to change the security level uh, on your router. It does default again to WPA2, which is what you're going to want to use anyway, so you really shouldn't have to touch that. <laughs> you can edit these settings by just clicking the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 gigahertz tab for the different SSIDs. Here we have the guest network function of the ASUS WRT firmware. You can set up to six guest networks, three on each band. All you would do to set up one of these is click enable and set the name and the type of encryption you want. You can also set an access time on them and um, whether they have access to your internal network, which is your, they call it, you know, the intranet. 
then you would click apply to enable that guest network. Next we've got the traffic manager for the router. So you've got quality of service here that you can turn on and you also have the traffic monitor which gives you real-time monitoring of your internet connection, your wired connection, and both of your wireless bands as well as you can look at the last 24 hours and by day. Parental controls here um, are more of a time limit. You would enable the parental controls and then you can pick a client and set time management on it so they can only access the internet during a certain period of time. If you want to block sites you would need to do that in the firewall which I will show you in just a bit. On the wireless tab you have your more advanced wireless connections. You would use the drop down box to switch between the two different bands. You also have WPS which is your Wi-Fi protected setup. Generally I like to turn the WPS off because it can be vulnerable in some implementations um, to being hacked. You also have bridge mode which is for the wireless distribution system. You can connect two routers together that support the WDS um, to create a wireless bridge. Mac filtering so you can add certain devices to the Mac filter list and only those are the devices that would be able to access your network wirelessly. Your radius settings are more of a professional enterprise level type setting so if you're using that in a small business or enterprise environment or even if you're playing with it a little bit at home this is where you would put the radius server information in to be able to uh, use that encryption method. Under professional you have even more advanced settings for the wireless um, enabling the radio which there's also a button on the side for disabling and enabling the radios as well as many other settings here for uh, including the power adjustment for the router. Under LAN you can change your LAN IP, so if you're used to 168.0.1, for example, you can change it in here, and then that your uh, router will use that address instead. Under the DHCP server, this is what gives your computers their IP addresses and allows them to connect through the router to the internet or other parts of your network. So in here, you can turn on and off the DHCP server, you can set a domain name for the router. You can also manually set the default gateway and the DNS and WINS servers. In here is where you would manually assign an IP address if you wanted a device to always have the same IP address. For example, I have a network printer in my home and so I click on the uh, MAC address of the printer and I like to have that be a static IP address so that if I reboot it for some reason it doesn't get a different address and then all of a sudden I can't print. All you do is pick the MAC address, type in the IP address you want to use and you click the add button and apply to be able to set that so it will always get that IP address from the router. Under route you can do static routing uh, if you need to put in static routing for some reason this is where you would do it. IPTV this is specifically to for IPTV and you can see they have a lot of ISP profiles in here already and under switch control this is for the LAN switch the four gigabit ports you can enable the hardware accelerator which is by default you can also enable jumbo frames under your WAN connection tab you can change the type of WAN connection you're using as well as put in any other settings that you might need for uh, for your system to work. You also have dual WAN so you can set load balancing or you can set a backup uh, internet connection. For example if you have a 3G 4G modem you can enable the dual WAN and select USB or you know select 
which one's the primary and it will uh, it will go to your USB as a backup if your primary goes down. Port triggering section here if you need to use port triggering for some reason and you also have port forwarding if you're using a service that you need to forward through the firewall you can set that up here you have the DMZ or also known as the demilitarized zone so if you enable the demilitarized zone you can put a system on the outside of the firewall so that it's not behind your firewall it would not be protected by it at all so any service any um, machines would be able to get to that without having to go through your firewall. DDNS, this is dynamic DNS so most of us have a dynamic IP address not a static one from our ISP so DDNS allows you to set up a domain name to be able to access your connection so in this case we would enable the DDNS client we would select what service we're using. The ASUS.com one is very nice because you don't need a username or password or anything and it's supported right in the router. You just put the domain name in. But if you're using one of these other services already, then you'd be able to use those. So you would key in the name and click apply. And then it'll register that with the ASUS servers and you'll be able to then access your network using that address in this case it would be test1234.asuscom.com NAT pass-through, this is more for VPN capability so these are enabled by default and if you didn't want VPN capability then you, would, you can disable these if you want but it doesn't hurt to leave them on you do have IPv6 capability if your ISP supports that you also have your VPN, which I will give you a little tutorial of how to set up a VPN in a separate video. In a nutshell though, all you need to do is enable the VPN server, and if you want to be able to access your network places through that VPN, you would have to enable that and set a username and password. Under firewall, this is on by default. Your firewall is enabled you also have denial of service protection that you can enable and a URL filter so they give you an example up here if you put XXX in the URL filter it will block anything that has an XXX in the um, URL or the web address you also have keyword filtering so you can put in keywords it'll search those pages and if it has that keyword on it then the site will be blocked network services filter so you can blacklist or whitelist a network service that you want to be able to go through your LAN or your LAN under administration we already really looked at this tab but uh, I'll show you it again real quick you have your administration your operation mode, wireless router, repeater, access point, media. Under system you can change your password and your time zone as well as your authentication method which is how you would access the router itself. Firmware upgrade and a restore save upload settings page. The system log, you have a detailed general systems log of what's been going on with the router. You have your wireless log as well as the current DHCP leases, IPv6 information, we're not using it so it shows it as disabled, a routing table, port forwarding information, as well as all the connections that are going on with the, uh, the router itself. Network tools, you have ping, trace route, NS lookup built right into the router, as well as netstat so you can see what's going on with your system and you also have wake on LAN function so if your systems support wake on LAN you can send a wake on LAN magic packet to the uh, machine to wake it up. Let's go back to the USB applications and the AI cloud now. USB application so if you have a USB device plugged into 
particularly a storage device plugged into one of the USB ports, you can set up the AI disk to enable that. It's We don't have it on plugged in, so it's going to tell us that there's no USB detected. You also have under server centers, you can set up the media server, a network place for your for your disk, FTP share, as well as the miscellaneous settings of the name of the device, which I would suggest you change it, change this so that it's something identifiable to you, as well as the work group. If your machines are in a work group, you can change this to match, and it'll make them easier to find the device easier to find on your home network. Your network print server. So if you have a printer plugged into the USB port, you would go into the network print server and you can configure that so that you can share the printer through your wireless network. 3G, 4G settings. So if you have a 3G, 4G modem plugged in, you would go into the 3G, 4G settings and put in your information for that to be able to um, connect up using 3G, 4G. You also have the download master, so if you didn't want to uh, leave a computer on but you wanted to be downloading something, you can install the download master and that will allow you to download files just using the router and your storage device that's plugged into it. For AI Cloud, which I will also give you a better tutorial on in a separate video, We've got the cloud disk you can enable and smart access also. So cloud disk, what this will allow you to do is to go to the um, storage device that you have plugged in from an outside network. And also smart access allows it to search through your network and find any of your network places that are shared as well as use wake on LAN to send magic packets to devices that support it. And you also have Smart Sync here. Smart Sync uses the Asus Web Storage account to be able to sync your cloud disk and your web storage accounts. Each of these tabs up here gives you a little bit more information and settings for the Smart Sync so that you can add a provider username and password your sync server if you were to uh, status if you were to have your AI cloud set up as well as settings which I would suggest you enable the password protection feature so that it times out after a certain amount of inactivity just to uh, just for a little bit of extra security and you also have a log file here for the AI cloud activities anything that's been done using that device I hope you enjoyed this overview of the ASUS WRT firmware. For the full review, please see www.hitechlegion.com and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter pages. Take care.